Hello everyone, I finally got my mic upgraded and got my laptop changed and so apologies for the long hiatus. This is not going to be a math video, this is more of a logistics video. I just want to talk about the SMO since the SMO registration is kind of open slash opening. And this is more directed to those of you who just Google Singapore Math Olympiad happen to stumble on this channel and um, are curious and want to know a little bit more. We're going to answer a bunch of questions, just uh, FAQs, more logistics based. And so the first question is, um, should I take part? Now, as long as you're eligible to take part, please do. Uh, I feel that uh, this is one of those things that has no loss. Even if you do terribly, it doesn't really hurt too much. It's also not going to take too much of your time and it is also not too expensive. So yes, if you are able to take part, you should. Um, if your school signs up for the SMO, but you say that I'm not sure if I can take part, ask them. And uh, if let's say you are not sure, pester your math teacher. However, if let's say that the school says, oh, uh, we are only going to allow, well, um, to be honest, there is no reason for the school to not allow you, right? Because this is from the SMS website. The school ranking system is based on the number of gold, silver, and bronze, not the average, not the top three or the top five students, the total number. So why would they not want to let one more person take part in the SMO? Um, I see no good reason for that. Um, apart from logistics, but then again, one more person is never going to cause the classroom to be too full. So just um, back. There is very little reason for your school to not allow you. Um, this is only for secondary schools, however. So uh, for primary schools, unfortunately, not possible. That is according to competition rules. For everyone else that is not in uh, primary school, in secondary level, you will participate in junior, senior, and or open, and I need to clarify the and or clause. Junior is for 13 to 14 year olds, senior is for 15 to 16 year olds, and open is meant for JC slash 70 to 18 year olds. However, everyone is eligible to take the SMO open, which means two things. First of all, if you are a SEC 2 or SEC 3 student and you're interested, you can take the SMO open. Um, second of all, if you are an, a year older, for example, if you are in JC but you are 19 years old, you can still take part in the SMO Open. So both directions there is still applicable. Uh, take note, it is driven by age. And so if you are from an international school or if you are not at the same age as the rest of the majority of your cohort, then you will follow your age and not your grade. When is it going to take place? It is sandwiched at the start and end of the June holidays. So it is also such that it is quite unlikely that it will interfere with your uh, overseas travel. If you have the Tuesday or Wednesday or the first week, you still have lots of time to travel after that. So if you're going for the SMO junior, it will be Tuesday. S senior is at the same time on Tuesday. So you cannot take both junior and senior. But Wednesday is open because you will be allowed to take both senior and open or both junior and open if you would like. So the same arrangement for round two, except that because school has already reopened, the open round two is one week later at the end of term three week one. Um, I've not put the exact dates because I want this video to still be relevant beyond 2025. So you can check the SMS website, the Singapore Math Society um, for more of the specific time and date details for each year that uh, does change a little bit because of the school holiday timings. Next up, is it just like a harder version of school math? And uh, this is a question that I want to say does not have a single yes, no answer because it would be a bit of both. Now, the SMS in about the year 20. 18 or 2019, uh, they made a conscious attempt to align it more closely to the school curriculum. But that just means that there'll be about 30 to 40% which are like your difficult school exam problems for that cohort. For example, if you're in SMO Junior, 
then maybe thirty percent of it will be like the difficult set two math final exam. Already, if let's say you are in sec one and you are taking the SMO in June, a sec two math final exam is already not easy, but that's still considered school math. Then there's another about uh, one third that is like school topics, but harder than ever. So a topic like let's say uh, LCM, HCF, or maybe a topic for senior like uh, circle geometry, you will have questions from those topics, but the difficulty is a lot higher. And then there'll be another one third, which are just in topics that you never ever see in school. So certain things that are only for Olympiads could include things like logic. It could include things like a lot of combinatorics, certain parts of number theory, certain parts of geometry, and even certain things in, let's say, inequalities, uh, functional equations, all of these not in school at all. And then you have round two, which is entirely different. And we'll say a bit more about that uh, in a moment. But before we talk about uh, what's in round one and round two, um, we want to know what we can win, right? So what can we win? We can get awards, gold, silver, bronze, and honorable mention. Now this is not gold medal for first place, silver medal for second place. This is more like a uh, tiers of gold, silver, bronze awards. Kind of like if you take part in SYF right there, it's not just one person or one team gets gold. The top 30 will be ranked. Everyone else, you will not be ranked, but you will get uh, the respective awards where round one determines up to a silver. And for those who are hoping to get a gold, uh, you must qualify for round two, which guarantees you at least a silver. And then you do well enough in round two that your total score will determine whether you are in the top 30 or whether you get a gold or whether you at least will still get a silver if you do qualify. Now we can talk about the difference. Why so much talk about round one and round two is that it is far more different than just paper one and paper two of, let's say, a usual exam. Round one is just a short answer paper. You just give your answer. If you guess the answer, if you just flip the coin, if you just did a lot of calculations, if you actually misread the question but got the correct answer, you still get one mark per question. So the perfect score is 25. Two and a half hours, 25 questions may feel either like very little time or a lot of time, uh, but almost everyone is very puzzled by how round two works, which is five problems in three or four hours and 10 marks each. Well, for those of you who have ever seen a round two paper, you may understand why, but if you have not, uh, I'll just start by saying it is much more difficult and you need to give full solutions, which means that it is kind of like writing workings. But if a question asks you to prove something, it is very different. For example, if someone asks you to prove Pythagoras theorem, it is very different from just using Pythagoras theorem. So that's more of a thinking why things are true than just reproducing things that you have learned. By now, of course, some of you want to know, okay, how can I practice, right? I want to see how they look like, how difficult it is. You have a few options. The first option is that uh, the Singapore Math Society, they do publish books. The books have the full papers and the full solutions. Um, and you have some school libraries or bookshops that also carry them. So you can look around and if you can find those books, then by all means, purchase the books. Um, but if you're here, then uh, you're on this channel, you would perhaps right now at the right side or the left side or the bottom, depending if you're on mobile or laptop, you will see a bunch of recommendations and the recommendations for my channel will be actually the SMO reviews, which I do. So uh, from the year 2020, I've done the reviews to the past SMO papers, uh, everything for round one and most of the things for round two. So you can refer to those videos. Uh, I also do have a link to the questions most of the time. So you can just try the questions first and then watch the video for solutions. That will take you back at least five years. If you want to go back further, um, just Google. For example, if you just search for SMO Junior 2017 or SMO Open 2015, chances are you'll be taken to some link that has the questions and answers. Uh, however, full solutions may not be that easy to find. So that's where the books are still useful if you can get hold of them. 
uh, or if I manage to upload the video solutions to some of the older years, then of course that'll be great for everybody. Now, some of you then will think of studying and I want to quickly jump in and say that please do not think of studying it like for your exams because there is no curriculum. There is no syllabus. All you can say is that, like I mentioned earlier, 30 to 40% of it will be from like school topics and maybe hard exam questions. Another 30% will be very much harder questions that are not even ever going to be asked in school. And then there are the rest that are not from school topics at all. So if you're like, how do I even imagine and study for that? Well, start by playing with those questions. And I say play because it is actually fun. A lot of times you will find that, oh, I didn't know you can actually do that with, let's say, sine and cosine. Or I didn't know that actually you can do this with circles. Or I didn't know that this actually works when I'm doing a divisibility test or something, right? So some of it you learn by doing the problems and reading the solutions or watching the solutions if you are able to do so. Now, it is also useful to try a full paper just to get to feel the variety of questions as well as topics. But after a while, then uh, one paper is supposed to be two and a half hours. That takes a while. And furthermore, uh, two and a half hours will not even be enough to try all 25 questions properly. So after you have just got a feel for it, then just try one or two questions, right? Uh, take it like a snack, like meaning that uh, if let's say that you are in the MRT uh, and you are bored, uh, we can take out our phone and play a game. Uh, you can also take out your phone and just look at one question and think about it. Uh, I'm not here to tell you that you have to do problems non-stop day and night, but uh, honestly, I feel it can be quite addictive actually. And the feeling of solving it is very satisfying, especially when you solve it without any help. But please do not spend three hours trying to solve one question because it may turn out that it just uses some theorem that you've never seen before. And some of these theorems may have taken mathematicians a hundred years to discover. We are not going to be able to figure out hundred years worth of math in one hour or 30 minutes. So when you are stuck for too long, please strategically give up, read or watch the solution. And whenever they mention some theorem, the theorem will usually be appropriate for you. So for example, if let's say I mention uh, Ptolemy's theorem, and you're like, what is Ptolemy's theorem? Any of the um, search engines or uh, AI engines will be able to give you the information, and most likely it will be easy enough for you to understand if it is in the section you're supposed to take. If you do this after maybe give it a month or two months, or if you're very hardworking and try a lot of papers quickly after a few days, you'll be like, why is this so hard? Two ways to answer that is that, first of all, we do math not because it's easy. We do math because it's a challenge, it's interesting. But the other way to answer is just, uh, practically speaking, the cutoff scores are not that high. It varies, but on average, if let's say you're saying, how much do I need to get into round two? It is 13 to 15 out of 25. And even if you get something that is as um, depressing sounding a 6 out of 25, you may get an honorable mention still. Now, this changes from year to year based on the difficulty of the contest. But that means that if I say that I can only understand half of the questions and I can only solve one third of them, you realize that one third of them is around honorable mention to bronze already. You are still doing fine. So do not panic and do not feel that, oh, this is just a huge waste of my time. And also, if you try a few more papers or try some more questions, you will see some repetition. And that's because it is meant to reward effort. They could uh, make all the questions familiar, but that would be like your school exam. They could make all the questions new, but that would be too hard. So there's a balance. And so maybe about one third to one half of the questions will feel familiar if you have enough practice. Finally, the question that some of you have on your mind is, but what's the point, right? Because we are Singaporeans and Singaporeans are always saying, what's in it for me? Well, uh, the math teacher in me says that if you've never done Olympiad math before, contest math is where the fun is. 
it is where you actually get to see that math is not just about applying formulas and using your calculator and just repeating after your teacher. It's actually fun. It is like almost like you are playing a new game versus in school it is like just reading the rules of the game in a, like, or a tutorial for the game, right? You have never really experienced math until you get to do something more interesting. But practically, uh, it is also true that uh, this is useful for all kinds of applications. Uh, DSA into JC, uh, it is useful for scholarship applications, it is useful for uni applications. It is also useful, I guess, because if you do the Olympiad practice, you will naturally find that your school math looks a lot easier by comparison, and then that sort of also guarantees that your score for your school math is going to be good enough that you don't have to worry too much about school math. So practically speaking, that's also a good feature. Okay, this is meant to be a short 15 minute video, so I am going to just leave any questions to the comment section. Please feel free to ask. I am not the organizer. I do not have the official word on everything, but as far as there is publicly accessible information, I will try my best to answer in the comment section. So yes, please do that and look forward to a bit more actual math videos coming back up in the weeks between now and the SMO. So thanks for watching, bye for now, and see you then.